Hi everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about plants, uh, we're going to be talking about tissue culture, we're going to be talking about potted plants, and we're going to be talking about various other types of plants that we can use to grow in our aquariums. And uh, specifically today we're going to be talking about one plant that is more of a carpet plant that has uh, become very popular and that is the Monte Carlo. And uh, the reason why I want to talk about that is because I've been using Monte Carlo a little bit over the last several months, uh, not just on my own aquariums, but also on aquariums that I'm building for other people. And one of the things that I've found with this plant is you've got to be careful with some of the uh, problems that you can run into with it. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some other things and we're going to get to that in just a minute here. So tissue culture plants have become very, very popular over the last four or five years, and it's because they can be mass produced uh, from just a small amount of the plant itself. Now, I'm looking at these three that are right in front of me here. These are Monte Carlo that I got from a, a uh, provider down in Florida, and uh, I have been using their plants in not just the two tanks that you're seeing here, but pretty much all through all of my aquariums over the last several months. Now, the one thing I wanna talk about with tissue culture plants is how they are um, shipped to you and what you need to do with them. Number one, when you get them, if you're not going to use them right away, you do need to keep them in a lighted condition. In other words, this plant likes medium to high light, so when you're storing these, I recommend that you put them in the area where you're going to be using them. For example, uh, this aquarium or this aquarium over here, uh, what I like to do is put the tissue culture up underneath the light on the top and let it sit underneath and acclimate to that light before I open it up and uh, do the planting. Now, planting is always much more difficult, obviously, with an aquarium that is fully put together. But we're living in a time when shipments don't always come on time and you can't complete your build or at least your planting part of the build because some of these things don't show up at the same time and therefore we have to wait and uh, unfortunately as we know uh, trying to plant after the fact is a much more difficult process so i'm going to tell you a couple of things that i think are key to doing that now monte carlo is a plant that i wanted to talk about specifically because there are some issues with monte carlo that we need to take into consideration one of those issues is cleaning the plant and getting the waste from underneath it. This is a very fast growing plant if it's done well and it's kept in the conditions that provide it with the ability to thrive and therefore uh, it can really spread through your tank especially if you're using CO2 or anything like that. Now when you receive these you're going to see that these come just like this I hope you can see that. And uh, basically what that is, is uh, this is the plant itself. Monte Carlo is a delicate plant. It's small. It's one of the reasons why people like it because it serves really well as a carpet plant. If you look at the very bottom of this, you will see that it's packed in a gel type substance that goes all the way around the bottom here. Now that has a bunch of nutrients in it and other things that keep this plant in good condition while it's being shipped to you and also you can store it for a short amount of time after receiving it. I do not recommend however storing it for long periods of time. Like I said acclimation is very important if you're not going to use it right away so therefore you need to keep it under the light that uh, you're going to be putting this under uh, or the conditions in which you're going to be putting this under to keep it thriving uh, if you're you know, going to be a week or so before you plant it. That's not hard to do and I really, really recommend it um, 
stored at a temperature of anywhere between 78 and 82 degrees and uh, that's pretty much what these tanks are at. Uh, this one here is at 80, this one here is at 82 uh, for different reasons, but uh, basically keeping these plants stored in a condition which is going to be conducive to the environment that they're ultimately going to be in is going to make them thrive and be healthy when you uh, do plant them. Now, one of the things about Monte Carlo, as I said a minute ago, is when you do plant it, it will, especially if you're using CO2 and FERTs, you are going to see this plant really take off if you have good conditions in your tank. In other words, if your water quality is good, if your substrate is in good condition, as you can see here, I have about two and a half inches of substrate in the front of this one and this one as well. And as we go back gradually, we actually get to about five and a half inches, almost six inches to the back of the tank. Now that, as I have mentioned in other videos, is because of the uh, effect of seeing depth uh, when you are looking at the tank. It gives that perception of depth and makes the tank look that much nicer. So. Getting back to what we're talking about with Monte Carlo, one of the things that happens with this plant when it is uh, put in here, as I said, it's going to take off rather quickly. And when it does, it's going to root itself about two inches down. And uh, it's not a real uh, deep-rooted plant, but it's a very sophisticated uh, group of roots that are very, very sturdy. Once they start to take hold, they're really, really, really going to be a solid, uh, a solid root structure on those. So what you have to keep in mind, however, is that Monte Carlo is designed to be a carpet plant. So when you are using it as a carpet plant, which is really its only use, there are some other, th we're going to talk about that in a minute. There are some other things that you can do with Monte Carlo that a lot of people uh, may disagree with me on or have tried it themselves and had success with it, but don't think of it really. But uh, once that carpet is established all through your tank, one of the things that's going to be important is being able to clean it. Now, that becomes really, really difficult when you first plant um, the Monte Carlo in your tank because there are going to be certain fish that are going to... Uh, be very disruptive to those plants. They can be anything from angels who are going down and picking at them, uh, not for food, but for the food that you are feeding them that may get trapped in that area. They're going to go down there and they're going to dig around for that. The other uh, two fish that are really going to be a problem with Monte Carlo if you're just planting it in an already established tank are plecos because of the way that they move through your substrate to find food and also quarries. Quarries do the same thing. They're foragers, they're continuously looking for food and they're moving about your root system and really trying to uh, find food in a way that uh, is uh, very, very disruptive to your plants. So what we're gonna talk about next here is how to plant these and how to maintain them in a way that does not create the problems that we just talked about. And we'll get back at that in just a second here. One of the biggest issues you're gonna have with carpet plants in general or Monte Carlo is they're really gonna be hard to get to root in an established tank. Now, if you're doing this as a new build, you're going to find that it's not hard to do. You can do what I call a dry um, planting, which uh, means that you would put your substrate in, you would do your hardscaping, and put all your plants that are going to be in the substrate in a dry substrate. You're going to really spray them down really well so that there's a uh, enough moisture in there to really keep these rooted really well. Then you're going to take and put cellophane over the top 
and that is going to give you an opportunity to allow those plants to get established without being disturbed. Now, if you're doing this with an established tank and you're adding Monte Carlo, which I'm going to be doing, uh, this can be a problem because there's a couple of things that are going to happen. The first thing is that these plants are going to be hard to get down into the substrate far enough to keep them anchored really well without your fish disrupting them. The flow in your tank sometimes can be disrupted. There's various different things that can create a problem for these plants to get well established. Um, a lot of times the, you walk in in the morning and some of these plants are floating at the top and uh, you know you have to keep putting them back in the soil. You do that three or four times and you're really going to destroy the plants and they're just not going to really turn out very well. So what I recommend is if you can get the plant to um, be in a container like this, which is called tissue culture as we talked about, what I recommend is if you can see down in here, there is a root system already established on here. Now these plants are roughly about an inch and a half tall and there is a ton of product in here. So there's a lot of product that you can, uh, once you've rinsed it all off and taken it out and you've broke it up into uh, various pieces, what you're going to do is you're going to bury these down into the substrate further than what you probably think is going to be healthy for the plant. Now, what I recommend is putting them down to about this much, about halfway. Now, it's going to appear that they're down too far and it's going to harm the plants, but it's not. What it's really going to do is give these plants an opportunity to really take off. They are amazing. I have seen this plant uh, literally in a dry, um, a dry planting situation where I have seen friends and I have done it myself, where I have literally just taken clumps of this and sprinkled it in the tank sprayed it down really really well and come back within a few weeks and uh, those plants are rooted everywhere in there and they are just solid as a rock now i don't recommend doing that specifically but what i would tell you is that uh, you need to get the roots down into the soil and don't be afraid to push them down in there as far as you can uh, holding on to the top of the plant uh, with your fingers as you use your tweezers to get them down in there and just even if it looks like the substrate's a little bit too high around the plant don't worry about it because it's going to uh, really take off within a few weeks you're going to notice that the plant is absolutely going to thrive and the shoots that are going to come off that are just going to spread through your tank like crazy as long as the conditions are good now what I mean about good conditions is this, you gotta have the right lighting. These I said in my introduction or in I think the second part of the video here, we talked about the lighting conditions are moderate to high light. Now I have grown these successfully in moderate conditions really well or in high lighted conditions. Either way, this plant will do well as long as the water is healthy as long as the substrate is of good quality and mineral rich and also if you are using fertilizers or co2 now i do not use co2 any longer i quit doing that about six months ago because i found that my plants were just really just being excessively overgrown all the time and i was continuously having to clean uh, and clip and do maintenance on the plants. And I really did not enjoy that uh, because it's just a lot of work. It, it seems like you're taking all the joy out of having the tank because you're, you're constantly maintaining uh, the clipping of these um, uh, plants uh, every couple of weeks or so. And that's just not fun at all. So what I recommend is if you're gonna use CO2, be prepared to understand that the maintenance on that is going to be much more intense than if you were not to use it. Now, a great fertilizer, I have a couple of different ones. I like Excel um, by Seachem, 
and Flourish by C. Kim. I think the two of those combined together are great uh, for growing plants. Uh, they really, really do a great job. If you are using Flourish, keep in mind to read the back of it because after a certain amount of time, there's going to be a recommendation that you actually take and use uh, some kind of refrigeration to keep that stuff in good shape. Otherwise, it will go bad on you. Now, if you're going to be using Monte Carlo someplace other than in a substrate, a lot of people say you can't do that, but you know what? You can, and I'm gonna tell you how you do that. I have taken Monte Carlo and found a piece of wood that has a area in it that's got a large crack in it. I have put some dirt or substrate down in there and buried the plants in that area and sometimes even using a small amount of um, um, super glue uh, such as this right here and uh, just a small amount. You don't need a lot of super glue to get that stuff to stay in place and that's really all you need to do. Now, I, I wanna talk a little bit more about the conditions in which Monte Carlo can be a problem. And one of those problems that a lot of uh, people that I know have uh, issues with is cleaning the area underneath the Monte Carlo where a lot of waste can hide, a lot of extra food from your fish. If you don't overfeed your fish, you're not gonna have that issue. I am extremely careful about how much I feed my fish to make sure that I don't have excessive amounts of organics in the water because you're just going to create an environment, especially with Monte Carlo or, or baby tears or any of those smaller plants for these pieces of food to hide and uh, for waste from the fish to hide and uh, it can be a real problem getting them cleaned out. Now, it's not something that I recommend uh, for people that want a low maintenance uh, tank. If you want a low maintenance tank, Monte Carlo, Baby Tears, any of that stuff is not going to be a plant for you. But if you're going to use Monte Carlo, and you do uh, have uh, the willingness to do that extra maintenance, the number one thing I would tell you is when you first plant it in an established tank, do your water changes uh, at least uh, every three days, take a quarter to a half. You don't need to go full half. I do that just because I'm a little anal about it, but uh, if you can take and do a quarter of the tank, and uh, be very disciplined about that, you are going to have a well-established tank and uh, you're going to really reap the benefits of having the tank be very stable. So the one thing that we talked about is the more plants you have in a tank, I've said this in almost every video that I've done, plant as many plants as you can afford or harvest them from other tanks. If you have more than one tank, harvest them and uh, use those plant cuttings in here. Almost every plant in this tank are cuttings from another plant with the exception of the mosses that have been glued onto the rocks here. Uh, every one of the little java ferns, all of these repins here, uh, all of them have been harvested from other tanks with the exception of the taller plants in the back take that back. The crypt back here has also been uh, harvested uh, and broke away from a, a much larger plant uh, that just got kind of out of control. And uh, when I did this build, I just decided I was going to really um, just kind of break that up and, and get some of that in here for some color. Now, again, it's going to be one of those disciplined things if you are doing Monte Carlo. Do not use a vacuum uh, on it because you are just going to uh, disrupt the roots uh, as they're being established. If you have well-established roots, you can do that as long as you're careful not to squish the plant down. But uh, getting underneath it, it's, a, it's one of those things. It's just, a, it's just one of those things that's really, really hard to get away from. If you have a situation where 
uh, organics are being trapped underneath or waste from the fish are being trapped underneath, it can be a real problem and cause your tank to crash rather quickly. So if you're going to use uh, Monte Carlo or anything like it, such as Baby Tears, be prepared to do some extra water changes and to also figure out a way to clean around those plants after they're well established and you won't have any issues that I think are going to uh, really cause you a lot of headaches. Now we're gonna go on to talking about some other plants and some other techniques of planting that I think are important, but I did wanna to touch on the Monte Carlo because that was really the focal point of this uh, video and I appreciate that. So hang in there with me and we're gonna to get to talking about some other plants and other ways uh, that you can use plants in your tank. Now, as I said in the intro, one of the ways that you can get plants, obviously, is through this tissue culture, uh, little uh, containers here, and you do get a lot of plant for your money. I mean, this thing is just jam-packed with, uh, with plants, and they're in here very tight. And uh, as I said, they're packed with nutrients that keep them very, very healthy until you plant them. Now you do not want to keep these around for very long, long periods of time. Like I said, maybe up to five days after you receive them, but keep them in an environment such as this right here. Now these plants are going to go in this tank and this tank over here. And as I said, these are already established tanks. so it becomes a little bit more difficult to get these planted in a way that is going to uh, not be guaranteed that we're not going to have disruption by some of the fish where they're going to float to the top. But that's one of the things that I have to deal with because these plants came after these builds were done and it was hard to get them and they didn't show up on time. Uh, what I recommend is storing them just like I have them here underneath a light it is going to be very much like the environment that you're going to plant them in and this gives them an opportunity to acclimate to that light and therefore when they get into the tank they are already being utilized uh, they're utilizing the light and the photosynthesis that is something that they are acclimated to already now I told you we were going to talk about different kinds of plants. Now, as we talked about with these, these are tissue culture. That just means that they're grown from uh, small pieces of the plant itself and uh, forced into these little dishes that you see here. And uh, the nutrients are placed in there to keep them in good shape and they're just really bursting at the seams. The other way that plants come, obviously, are potted plants. And those are basically uh, plants that you will find, such as crypts. Uh, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, uh, swords, uh, uh, anubias. Uh, there's lots of different ones that you're going to find that are going to come either in pots, glued on rocks sometimes, glued on wood sometimes. Petite nana is very, very... Uh, very much uh, a plant that you're going to find probably connected to a rock or something like that. Now you don't have to buy it that way, but it is sold uh, in a lot of places already established on a rock. They typically just super glue it on there and then the root system takes off. But one of the things that I have found with those kind of plants is that you may not want them on that particular rock. The rock may not go with what you have. So try to get those plants as best you can in an environment where they're loose in a bag. Now, Anubias uh, is a plant that's roots, and same with Crips. Crips do not have to be put in soil. They can be jammed in between rocks and crevices and they will find their way into that substrate over time. But they do need to be anchored down in a way in which they're just not gonna to float to the surface or be disrupted by plant or uh, fish that are moving around in your tank. And uh, you know, going through those little crevice areas there, plecos are very famous for this. Um, 
as well as some of the larger quarries. They can be very disruptive to plants that are in your tank. So what you want to do is make sure that you get those plants buried into any kind of rock where you've got a tight space between the rocks or between wood or some of the branches on a wood. Maybe there's a little crotch area on where your wood comes together. You can put them on there or you can just simply super glue them to the rocks wherever you want them if you plan to keep them in that area and uh, they will do just fine with that. Now, there are different kinds of super glue out there. There's some that I don't recommend. You gotta be careful on what you're buying. So make sure that you're buying something that is fish tank safe and is not going to create a problem uh, long-term for the health of your fish. Also, there are some kinds of super glue that I have found that do not work very well at all with uh, the plants in the tank. Um, they, they just don't want to stick very well. And I'll give you a good example of something that I purchased um, that works really well and is going to save you about half the money. And that is uh, the Gorilla Glue um, variety of super glue. This stuff here works just as good as the Seachem products or other products that you might find out there that are super glue safe for your aquarium. This is perfectly safe. This is the only one uh, that uh, Gorilla Glue makes uh, that is uh, a, su a super glue product and it is perfectly safe for an aquarium and it works really, really well. So if you can find that and you can glue some of your plants down and that's what you need to do to keep them anchored, that's the best way to do that. Uh, if you can find, like I said, the, the little crevices between the rocks or between wood or in wood or whatever, uh, that is, you know, ideal for that particular situation, but that's not always available to us, so you have to just sort of do what you can to get those in there. And as I said, uh, the crypts, the Anubias, and uh, other plants like that do not, uh, java fern for example, does not need to be in substrate. These plants will thrive, absolutely thrive. Uh, Anubias you don't want to put in substrate at all. You can put crypts in substrate, you can put uh, uh, ferns of all kinds in substrate, but like I said, if you don't have the ability to do that, you can just wedge them between rocks and wood and whatever and they will just take off really well as long as the lighting and everything else is ideal for them. So that's going to wrap up our video today. When you're out looking for plants, do a couple of things. Uh, keep in mind what the plants are going to be used for, where in the tank they're going to be placed. If they're going to be carpet plants, like I said, try to do them on a new build because if you can plant as much stuff as you can, on a new build, you're going to not only have less problems because the tank's going to have a chance to cycle three, four, five weeks, and those plants are going to be really well rooted. The more plants that you can put into a tank when you are starting out a new build, the better off that tank is going to be and the healthier that tank is going to be. As we know, plants take in carbon monoxide, they give off oxygen. Therefore, oxygen uh, works really well with uh, giving your, your fish uh, that much more oxygen in the water, uh, especially if you're not using any kind of bubble uh, stones or anything like that. But the more plants that you can put into a tank from the very beginning of the build, the better off you're going to be because your tank's going to be really healthy. They suck up those really bad things like ammonia and nitrites, and uh, they uh, really, really, really keep your tank really balanced and keep your, your fish and in, in, in your tank healthy. And uh, I just think that's the best way to go. If you can't do that, like I said, try as best you can to uh, get those plants buried in a little bit deeper. You may think sometimes, with, especially with like Monte Carlo, it's a delicate little plant. But if you can get it down into that soil far enough, don't think that it won't come back because it'll pop right up through the top of that soil and have runners everywhere and do a great job. 
Today, I appreciate your uh, sitting with me and talking with me about this. I thought this was an important subject. I thought it was an interesting subject for all of us to deal with as far as learning about plants and how to deal with them. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and leave your comments. I love the comments. I like to know what you're thinking. If I'm doing something wrong or if I'm saying something that you want to add to or if you have a question, I'll be glad to answer that for you. Now, I will be putting a uh, in the information area at the bottom a link to where I buy my plants and uh, I will leave that for you. I'm not saying you have to buy them from there. I don't get anything from these people for uh, you know, using their names, so I'm not gonna mention it, but I will leave a link for you if you are looking for good plants at a good price. These guys are fantastic. So uh, thank you again. I hope that you'll join me again soon. We're going to be doing a nice build here on a 50-gallon here over the next couple of weeks, and I hope you'll join me. We'll talk to you then.